What is up everyone and welcome back. Today we're checking out Griva and the track Tokage. And we are going to put it head to head with Durin Gray's cage. Griva were requested by my buddy Japanese music nerd, fellow video maker and YouTuber several months ago, but I hadn't gotten to during Gray's gauze yet, and it certainly requires that because apparently there's a heavy during Gray influence in this track, and people have said it's very similar to the track Cage. Border that I've seen accusations bordering on outright theft. So the only way for me to figure that out myself and deduce my opinions here is to put them head to head, and we're gonna do it for you guys today. Also Please feel free to go out and check out Japanese Music Nerd's channel. He just broke over a thousand subs. He's a great dude. I did a podcast with him and Heggy from Noise Pictures and Words not too long ago, which is awesome. It was a lot of fun. I hope to do another one of those soon. And hopefully we'll cause some more trouble there as well. But unfortunately, Gravia just recently, or Griva just broke up recently, December of 2017. Kind of sucks because I was just starting to break into VK at that point here on the channel. But I'm really curious. I know there's been some controversy with these guys on if there's outright riff theft and or, or just influence. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and hear it. We're going to do the performance video, the promotional video from Griva. For Tokage, and then we're going to do a live for Cage because I have not done the live yet, from the, which the, has the Perry X translation, and her videos are fantastic. So let's go ahead and get into it. The band is Griva, the track is Tokage, and here we go. Certainly do get some of that indie influence here from Third and Gray. A little bit of that look, but it's certainly common for VK, especially nowadays. Get some of those tones, but they are tuning in a similar team. Oh, I like the riffs, I like the grooves, I actually really enjoy the guy's voice. You can hear some of the influence, some of the punk, but I haven't heard anything that I'd consider derivative yet. We'll have to see what happens when we get into Cage. I really like those riffs. Tap that blend of punk and new metal. I actually really like the mix here. I love those guitar tones, the bass tone. It's really clear and cutting through well. I like the mix on those cymbals. Definitely really enjoy the riffs here. Like this little pinch harmonics they're doing. Nice little blast. Drummer's got a great groove. He almost feels very relaxed. Big difference is early during Gray. Totally, the guitars, they're clearly using active pickups, and the DEG guys were not. Not back then, anyway. I love that slight shift in the drum pattern to give this more of a groove. Really love that bass line.
What's that kick down? certainly hear a little bit of the co and some of the vocal delivery and certainly because they both have similar registers but I don't get the overly blatant like rip off or being completely derivative here we're gonna have to listen to Cage to check that out honestly I really enjoyed the track that was a lot of fun I Really like the guitar tones. I like the riffs. I think they do a great job of blending the punk and the new metal together. I I like his voice a lot. I think the bass bass tones are great, and I like what the bass player was doing. I like the very relaxed, more groovy approach that the drummer was going after. He wasn't flashy. He wasn't doing a ton of fills. But he really helped set the tone quite well. I like those little pinch harmonics. People can say, well, that's a darn gray thing. And I respond with pinch harmonics get used in metal constantly. And no real, no one band certainly owns this using a pinch harmonic. And if you want to go ahead and make that tag would really have to go back and tack it on to Zach Wilde and Dimebag and a lot of those players that are very heavy handed with pinch harmonics. But so we'll see if that plays into to it. And we'll see if we get some riffs that are really derivative. If so, I might have we might have to go back a little bit and break this down a little further. But the next track is Cage by Dirt and Gray. We're doing a live. We're doing the Perry X translation. I'm not sure which live she used. So let's go ahead and get into it. Certainly a difference there with the using the music box opening here, which seems to really be a very consistent theme in Visual K. Looks like it's an older live. Definitely different than the riffs. A lot more big chord strums here. Definitely more of a slightly 90s or late 80s feel here. These very twangy chord shapes. Very twangy tone. It's a similar progression. But it's definitely a different track. So the influence is certainly there. But there's some really strong points of difference here. You get some of the punk influence, certainly. Some of that 90s alt rock influence. You can feel by Shinya. I really like that, actually. Very tasty. Always impressed by Ko's lyrics and his metaphor.
love those fills. You're definitely getting different riffs, different guitar parts. The vocal phrasing's a little similar. But if we base that just off a of pattern, then so many bands would be considered derivatives and direct ripoffs of other bands. Really like this bass for it, this bass passage. Get a bit of Jason Newstead in his playing here and his tone and his hands. Especially with the pick usage. I really like those sparkly clean tones. It almost sounds like they're using a 12 string, but they're not. It's got a great sound to it. I really like how they've developed that. I like the use of tremolo and really like the, uh, the use of picking here. Shitty is on fire here, man. He really is. He's this is where I love him as a drummer, when he really gets to do a lot in that rock realm and really open up that his hand speed and his precision on his fills and his feel. Phenomenal lyrics, great translation by Perry. I like those big wad wrench passages there. All right, that was Dirty Gray Cage Live addressing taking the second shot here and looking at Grivia or Griva and Tokage and putting it head to head to see are they real is it really a ripoff of Duran Gray's cage? And I've gotta say no, it's not. Are there some similarities? Sure. I'd really need to sit there and stack them and, and set it up. I have to figure out how to do that. Really set it up side by side and listen to a part, talk about it, listen to a part and talk about it, and really break it down. And I did not prepare to do that. But, so I might do a part two, depending on what you guys have to say in the comments and really dissect them side by side pull them up in two different windows and just play a play a piece of each and look at it. But no, I do not believe that it's a direct ripoff. And I think a lot of people, this is pure opinion here, by the way, I think a lot of people get too wrapped up in throwing around the term ripoff. I don't, Bands are going to have influences. Duran Gray has influences. You can certainly hear a lot of that. And I'm finally starting to get more of a grasp of where they came from. As I've got wonderful Patreons and other subscribers out here in subscriber land that are showing me early VK. So I can hear, like Periolt, for example. I can hear where a lot of that's coming from. But... You can't, I can't say that Duran Gray ripped off the bands they liked. I can't say that Grivia ripped off Cage because they didn't. Now, to be a ripoff to me, 
personally, it's got to sound pretty note for note. I mean, you can have influences. A good example of, of taking a riff and adding a slight twist on it to make it your own would be go listen to Four Horsemen by Metallica. Go into the melodic solo section that was added. Listen to that riff. Dun 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 dun. Where did that originally come from? How about Leonard Skinner and Sweet Home and Sweet Home Alabama? Dave Mustaine even admitted he did that as a joke. But if you listen to it, the riff changes a bit and it evolves. So it started out that same riff in that same pattern and then it evolves. So it's no longer the same riff. But there are some influences. Look at Molly Crew. Nikki Six flat out admits that he's taken influences from other bands. You know, there are some ba- there are some bands I've felt like are just too similar. And there are some riffs that are really close to note for note. Great example of that would be Papa Roach. And Last Resort, with that main riff, that is absolutely a maiden riff. I'm trying to remember the exact track that it came from. But it's... At least the opening parts of it is a maiden riff. I and mean, there's plenty of examples out there. But you listen to song composition here with Tokage and Cage. And you know there's some real big differences. Durin Gray doesn't go as heavy in, at parts. There's some nice groovy guitar riffs in Tokage. You know, vocally, both guys have similar voices. And you hear it a lot with Japanese singers. You know, they seem to have... A lot of the the male VK singers seem to have similar ranges. So you do get some of that influence or you can hear that here and there, especially if you're a fan of so many different bands. You can hear a little bit of that influence in another singer. It's really difficult to sound 100% unique in music, especially in 2018 or even... I'd have to look when these, I have to look when both records came out. And Cage, of course, came out in 99. And then Tokage, I think, came out in 2012. But even then, it's really, really difficult to sound 100% completely original. And I don't even know if it's possible. And there's just not enough space out there with guitars to be able to do it. So there's going to be influence. But I don't personally feel, as a musician, as a guitar player and a bass player, as somebody who's been listening to hard rock and metal for over 30 years and has been around the scene and done as much in the scene as I have, I don't feel that it's a ripoff. There's certainly influence there, and I would be remiss if I didn't state that. But... I don't feel like it's a, I don't feel like it's completely derivative and I don't feel like they've actually ripped it off note for note. So what do you guys think? I know this might be slightly controversial because I've seen plenty of Durian Gray fans on different videos calling out the band. I really liked the Grieve, uh, the Grieve track. I thought, I thought Tokage was awesome and it was a lot of fun to listen to and I'd certainly listen to it again. Cage, Cage is a great track. It's another one of those Durin Gray tracks that sounds incredibly pretty. Yet, it's got these uh, heart-ripping, gut-wrenching lyrics, which Ko is known for. It seems like like Visual K in general has a lot of that. That beautiful, poppy feelings in the music and the lyrics that just rip your guts up. Do like that contrast. I think it's great. Love it with the Gazette and other bands as well. So let me know what you guys think. If you have any other tracks like this that you want me to put head to head and talk about, certainly do that. 
if you require a deeper break down of these two tracks we sit down and look at look at verses and choruses and stuff together video by video do small increments of each let me know i'd certainly do it i think it'd be a lot of fun and i like i like breaking things down even more than i typically do on videos i like to be able to have the entire song with you guys instead of just stopping and starting but i do that a lot when i do reviews is i'll break the tracks apart so something i do when i when i do a review for you guys it's just not something i do when i'm doing a when i'm doing an opinion on a song in its entirety um, in real time love you guys i hope you enjoyed this it's been a while since i've done some deg i certainly need to do more we've got that new record coming or coming right around the corner and i'm looking forward to see what i should have a new I should have reaction for the or a full initial listen listen for the next video coming up. Also, please do not hesitate to go check out Japanese Music Nerd's channel. He's awesome. He's a great dude. Been a great longtime supporter of the channel. He certainly helped me learn more about the scene and helped me navigate all of this as somebody who, before I started the channel, had never really gotten into Visual K. So. Thank you, my friend. Please go check him out. And give him some love. That podcast is up on his channel somewhere. At some point, I might get permission to upload it. Have to do another one now that I have a better microphone and not have that annoying click. So we'll have to we'll have to think about that at some point too. Thank you to my law enforcement, military veterans, and first responders for what you do every day. I love you and I appreciate you. As always, all of you have been awesome. I have been bald man. I'll see you in the next one. Be excellent to each other and keep headbanging.